All right, guys, so let's take a look at the code that we added and actually dissect what each line means. So we've got these three lines of code. And if you take a look at the fast API documentation that we were on, it's going to define those three lines of code as a path operation. So that's the terminology it's using. It refers to this as a path operation. Now, the name itself doesn't really matter. Uh, you'll see that in other web frameworks, uh, especially in other languages, sometimes they refer to this as a route. Um, but they, uh, within the documentation for fast API, refer to it as a path operation. So you'll see me flip between those two terms, but they fundamentally mean the same thing. So let's actually take a look at this specific path operation. And we can really see that it's made up of two components. The first component is going to be the function. And the second thing is going to be the decorator. So we'll come back to the decorator in a bit. Let's take a look at this function. So this function is fundamentally no different than any other Python function. It's a plain old function. Uh, you'll see that there's this async keyword. Technically, this is optional. This keyword's only needed if you're going to be performing some sort of asynchronous task. So something that takes a certain amount of time. So things like, uh, you know, making an API call, things like talking to the database. If you want to do that asynchronously, you do have to pass in the async keyword. But we're not doing that right now. So what we can do is we can actually just remove that. So I'm going to delete that and just remove that. And so now it's just a regular function. And you'll see that the code behaves exactly the same. So we have a function. Um, we give the function a name. So the documentation just shows an arbitrary name of root. Keep in mind, the name itself doesn't matter. So if I wanted to name this, you know, uh, get user, then that's going to be fine. It's not going to change anything. It's an arbitrary name. However, I do recommend you name your functions, your path operation functions uh, to be as descriptive as possible. So if you're trying to log in a user, uh, then maybe you should call this login user or just log in so that it's as descriptive as possible. But keep in mind, the name that we put here does not matter. So I'll change this back to root for now. And then we have, so then within this function, you can perform any kind of logic. So if this function is meant to log in a user, it's going to have all the code for logging in a user, whatever that may be. So maybe, you know, checking the passwords in a database to make sure that they match and to make sure that the credentials are properly accurate. Uh, and then after that, you know, just like any other function, we can return something. So whatever we return here is going to be the data that gets sent back to the user. So if we go back to the website, go to our web server, if you take a look at this message, hello world, that's exactly what we sent. And if we change this to be whatever we want, it's going to get returned back in the same way. So here we're just returning a Python uh, dictionary, I guess. And what happens is fast API will automatically convert this to JSON, which is the main universal language of uh, APIs, right? We all talk to, we use JSONs to send data back and forth between an API. So it converts this to JSON and it sends it back to the user. And that's why we see that on the web browser. Now, the next thing that we have is this decorator. If you're not really familiar with decorators in Python, it's okay. You don't really actually need to understand, you know, the core concept of a decorator. Just understand that when you apply a decorator to a function, it's going to perform a little magic to this function. Because if I remove this decorator, if we just comment it out, Take a look at this code. This code has nothing to do with fast API. It's a plain old function. So how do we actually make it, you know, act like an API? Well, we have to use this magical decorator. This decorator turns this into an actual path operation so that someone who wants to use our API can hit this endpoint. Uh, and so you just specify at the at symbol. That's what the, uh, that's how we clarify that this is going to be a decorator. Then we reference our fast API instance. And then we have a couple of different options. So what here we pass in is the HTTP method that the user should use. So this is a get method, which means that we have to send a get request to our API. And, but we can use plenty of different HTTP methods. And I strongly recommend you actually take a look at the different HTTP methods. If you do HTTP methods, we can select this one. This is the Mozilla page. You can see all of the different HTTP methods. So there's get, post, put, delete. So those are the main ones. There's a couple of other ones that uh, are sometimes used, but for the most part, those are the core ones. And so here, once again, just the HTTP method. And then finally, we have the path. Uh, uh, and so this is the root path. Uh, and, so, and so it's a little bit hard to explain the path, but it's basically the path after the specific domain name of your API. So if you take a look at our uh, our URL, our web server is hosted on this specific uh, URL. If I go to this page, let's open up a new link and just paste it in here. So, so the URL and the path in this case is just slash. So that's the equivalent of just hitting enter right here or putting a slash, which doesn't change anything, right? Right. Whether the slash is there or not, it's basically going to take you to the same URL. It's very similar to going to, you know, Google 
google.com, right? That's going to take us to google.com. But if you go to google.com slash, it's, it's the same thing. So it's the root path. So whatever um, domain name our API is hosted on, whatever URL, you, it's just saying it's the root path. You know, if I change this to, um, you know, log in, right? That means that this path operation will only apply if the user goes to our URL and then goes to slash login. So that decorator, this path right here, just references the path that we have to go to in the URL. And so if this is actually changed to, um, how about posts and then, you know, like vote. So maybe this is the URL for voting on a specific post, then we would have to go and do the same thing here. So we'd have to go to post slash vote. So nothing too complicated, but those are the two pieces that make up a simple path operation. You've got the function, then you've got this uh, decorator where you have to pass in the specific HTTP method and then the URL you want it to go to. And I'm gonna change this back to the default. And now what I wanna do is, let's go ahead and make a simple change. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change the message to be, um, welcome to my API. We'll save this. Go back to the root URL because we changed it to the root URL. Let's hit refresh. Notice how it still says hello world. Nothing changed. So what gives? Right? It, you know, our code's changed. I saved it. Why are we not updating it so that it returns welcome to my API? Well, the problem is, is that anytime you make a change, we have to restart our server. So to restart our server, you hit control C, which is going to stop it. Then you could just hit the up arrow key so that you can find that command that you ran before and just run it again. And so now if I hit refresh, we can see that it updated. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, that's a little annoying. Every time I change my code, I have to do a control C and then an up arrow and then hit enter just so that I can, you know, make sure that the server actually implements those changes. And it is a little annoying, but there is a workaround. So if we go to the documentation, you'll see that when they run UVCorn, they pass in the dash dash reload flag. And the dash dash reload flag will actually take a look at your code and monitor your code. So anytime that you change your code, it'll automatically restart your server for you. So let's try that out. I'm going to do a control C. I'm going to hit the up arrow and I'm going to pass in the dash dash reload flag. So we'll hit enter. And now what I want you to do is make some changes. So it doesn't really matter what you change. I'm just going to add a couple of exclamation points and then I'm going to hit uh, save. And I want you to focus what, on what happens down here. So if I hit save, look at that. It automatically restarted the server for me. And so now if I go back to my website uh, or my API, hit refresh, you can see that the exclamation points are there. So moving forward, in a development environment, only when we're in a development environment, we're going to pass in the dash dash reload flag. When we go to production, we don't need that. We're not going to be setting it up because we're not going to be changing our code in a production environment. And so I think that's a good stopping point here. Uh, in the next video, we'll just quickly review exactly what is a path operation so that we could just reinforce what we learned in this lecture. All right, guys, so let's quickly recap what we learned in the previous lecture. I want to make sure that you guys have a solid understanding of the different components of a path operation, because ultimately, that's all your API is. It's just a bunch of path operations. So first things first, we have our decorator. So our decorator has the little at symbol, uh, and so that's what signifies it as a decorator. And then we reference our fast API instance, which we called app. And then we have our HTTP method. So in this case, this is going to match only get methods. And then we have the specific path or the URL. So this is the root URL in this case. And then below that, we've got our specific path operation function. So this function is going to contain all the logic for performing some kind of task. And when it's going to return some data, and that's the data that gets returned to the user when they hit this specific path operation. So now that we have a solid understanding of how path operations work, let's see if we can create a new path operation. And let's say this one represents retrieving a bunch of social media posts from our application. So in this case, you know, there's two things that we need. So the first thing is our function, our path operation function. So we'll say def, and then we'll give this function any name. Uh, I think since we're gonna be retrieving a bunch of posts, I think a good name is gonna be uh, get underscore posts. Um, but keep in mind, you can name this anything you want. Like I said, it does not impact the behavior of anything. And then we wanna see, uh, so here we would pass in all of our logic for retrieving posts, but we don't actually have an application. So I'm just gonna say return. And then we'll just say, um, maybe, I don't know, data. And this is gonna be, this is your post. But in reality, we would provide a list of posts. 
So let's save that. And then there's one last thing we have to pass in our decorator like we did before to actually make this turn into a special path operation function. So we'll say at, and we reference the instance, uh, the fast API instance. So we'll do app dot. And then we have to figure out what HTTP method we want to use for this path operation. So when it comes to retrieving data, uh, you usually use a get operation. And if you don't know which one to use, um, you can just go back to this page right here and it's going to explain uh, what each one's for. So if you select get, it's going to explain when you would use a get. Uh, if you want to use a post, it's going to explain when you should use post. But um, I already know that for retrieving data, it's usually a get operation. So we're going to keep it as a get method. Now for the URL, I'm going to say uh, to retrieve uh, posts, we want to go to the slash post URL. So let's save this and then let's see um, if we can retrieve that data. So um, if I hit refresh here, it's going to say hello world, um, but that's because if you take a look at this, we're at the root path and that's going to match this specific path operation. Uh, and this path operation is on slash post. So if we go to slash posts and then hit enter, take a look at that. We have now got our data, which is our posts. So we've hit that second path operation that we just created. And it really is as simple as that. You just define a function, you define the HTTP method, and then the URL. Now, there's one thing to note, and that is that, um, you know, the way that Fast API works is that when anytime we send a request to our API server, uh, it's going to actually go down the list of all of our path operations, um, and then it's going to find the first match. And as soon as it finds the first match, it's going to stop running your code. So uh, if I actually change this to just the slash URL, just like this one above, what do you think is going to happen? All right, they both reference the uh, get method, and they both reference the same URL. So which one do you think is going to win? Well, let's take a look. If I do just the slash again, it says, hello world. So it looks like the first one uh, won. And the reason for that is that, once again, Fast API literally just goes through the code and it looks for the first match. So there's really only two criteria in this case. What's the HTTP method? It's a get. So anytime you, go, you work in your browser, your browser is always going to send the get method by default. And then what's the URL? So the URL is a slash URL. So it matches this one and it does not continue past that. So it never runs this code. So it sends that back. Now, if I took this, copied it, and moved it to the top, what do you think is going to happen? Which one do you think is going to run? Well, let's hit refresh. Look at that. So that one ran. So the first path operation that matches is always going to be the one that runs. Simple as that. So the order does, in fact, matter. However, if I change this to posts and, and leave this at the top, Right. If I hit refresh, we get hello world. So what happened was Fast API went down the list, right, and it received a request that uh, let me just put some comments. So the rec request comes in. Uh, sorry, that's not the way to comment in Python. Request comes in with a get method, and it comes in with the uh, the URL is going to be slash. All right, and so these are the two things that it looks for to match. So it hits the first path operation. So this is a get, so those two match, and then it looks at the URL, which is slash, uh, but that does not match, so it skips past with this one, and then it goes to the next one, you know, does, and then it checks to see if that matches. So then get matches, the URL matches, so then it returns hello world, and that's why it returned hello world. And the reason I wanted to highlight this is that the order, in fact, does matter. So you have to keep that in mind, and it can impact the way uh, your API ultimately works. I'm gonna just take this, move this to the bottom, um, but in this case, the order doesn't matter because they're hitting two different uh, paths or two different URLs.